seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We have ignition. We have liftoff. Powered aloft by an Atlas, Centaur's first airborne moments are similar to a normal missile flight. Atlas booster engines jettison several minutes after launch, but the sustainer continues to provide thrust. The air is thinner now, causing less friction, so Centaur no longer needs insulation to protect against aerodynamic heating. After some four minutes of flight, Atlas completes its assignment. Separation latches open, Wacker rockets fire, and Centaur moves free. Its engines ignite for the first time, propelling it upward into a parking orbit. And now, 126 miles above Earth, it begins to coast for almost an hour. Photoelectric cells sense its attitude with respect to the sun. And they command more control rockets to point its insulated tail toward the heat source thus reducing fuel ball off. Centaur is north of New Guinea, crossing the equator the second time when its engines ignite again. It accelerates rapidly to nearly 23,000 miles per hour and enters an elliptical transfer orbit. Then it coasts again this time over five hours, until it nears the final destination. Now its flight plane changes to the equatorial plane of Earth. Engines fire a final time, increasing the velocity, which has dropped to 3,600 miles per hour, to approximately 6,800 miles per hour and Centaur moves into the 24-hour orbit position. Finally, the satellite separates. In six and a half hours, Centaur has directed itself to a point 22,000 miles above the equator, approximately 1,700 miles west of Ecuador. Orbital velocity of the satellite is such that it always remains over the same point on Earth as the Earth rotates. From below, it appears stationary, locked permanently in one spot. This typical mission represents just one of the assignments proposed for the NASA Centaur Space Vehicle.